So this is going to be a demonstration of the structures on the flexor aspect of the forearm. This is the supine cadaver. My assistants have retracted the arm and held it apart. We have completely exposed the cubital fossa and we have exposed the muscles and the neurovascular structures on the flexor aspect of the forearm. So let's start off from the cubital fossa and trace everything downwards. This is the brachial artery. And we can see the brachial artery is dividing into a radial artery and an ulnar artery. And we shall trace it down. The next structure that you can see here, this is the median nerve. First, before we trace them further down, let's take a look at the muscles. This muscle that we have cut, this is the pronator teres. The pronator teres gets attached to the pronator impression on the lateral side of the radius. And we have cut it here because it was tightly fibrosed. And this muscle that we see here, this is the brachioradialis. And this forms the infralateral boundary of the cubital fossa. The next muscle that we can see here is the one which I have picked up here. This one. This is the flexor carpi radialis. The next muscle, deep to the flexor carpi radialis, this tendon. This is the flexor digitorum superficialis. Going further medially, we have this tendon here. This one. This is the flexor carpi ulnaris. In this particular cadaver, the, right next to the flexor carpi radialis, this thin tendon that we can see here, this is the palmaris longus, which is almost fused with the flexor carpi radialis. Having mentioned these muscles, now let's go a little deeper and we can see this muscle further deep down. This is the flexor digitorum profundus. Now let's take a look at the neurovascular structures. Let's trace down the median nerve. This is the median nerve. We can see that it is piercing through the two heads of the pronator teres. And then it passes through the flexor digitorum superficialis. This is the flexor digitorum superficialis and it comes out between the flexor digitorum superficialis here. So therefore, it pierces through two muscles, pronator teres between the humeral and the ulnar head and through the two heads of the flexor digitorum superficialis between the humeral ulnar head and the radial head. And then it comes to the flexor aspect of the forearm. And then it runs down. It is situated between these two tendons, the palmaris longus, and the flexor carpi radialis, and this is the median nerve. This is a site of anesthesia. We can give a regional block here. We can feel the palmaris longus tendon and the flexor carpi radialis, and we can inject anesthetic agent to anesthetize a large part of the palm for regional nerve block. And after that, the median nerve goes through the carpal tunnel where it can get compressed in the condition known as carpal tunnel syndrome. Now let's take a look at the next structure. For that, we'll have to retract the flexor carpi ulnaris, and this is the flexor carpi ulnaris tendon here. And we can feel it's a tight tendon. And once we retract it, we can see this neurovascular structure here. This is running under cover of the flexor carpi ulnaris, and this is the ulnar nerve. And if we trace the ulnar nerve proximally, we can find my finger is disappearing in a tunnel. This is the cubital tunnel. And this is the place where the ulnar nerve can get compressed. This cubital tunnel is actually formed by an aponeurotic expansion from the flexor carpi ulnaris itself. And if you look at the flexor carpi ulnaris, we can see it is giving an aponeurotic expansion. And this aponeurotic expansion actually merges with the antibrachial fascia and it forms a tunnel on the top of the medial epicondyle. And that is the cubital tunnel which can compress the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve then enters the palm outside the carpal tunnel. So therefore, it is not subject to compression in carpal tunnel syndrome. Now let's take a look at the blood vessels. Again, come back to the cubital fossa. This is the brachial artery. And we can see the brachial artery is dividing into a radial artery and an ulnar artery. artery. This division takes place in the cubital fossa, towards the end of the cubital fossa. Let's trace this artery, this branch. This is the radial artery. The radial artery runs for a large part of its course under cover of the brachioradialis. And we can see that here. It is running under cover of the brachioradialis. And it is in this region where my finger is located, lateral to the flexor carpi radialis tendon, we can feel the pulsation where my index finger is located. We can feel the pulsation of the radial artery against the lower end of the radius. And thereafter, the radial artery will then run laterally like this. It runs through the anatomical snub box and it pierces and enters the hand as the deep palmar arch. Now let's take a look at the other division. 
of the brachial artery. This is the other division. This is the ulnar artery. And we can see it is giving a branch here. The ulnar artery gives off the common interosseous artery, which gives off an interosseous recurrent and an anterior and posterior interosseous. But all those have been highly thrombosed and fibrosed here. So we can see only the main ulnar artery here. The ulnar artery then runs medially, and we can see the rest of the ulnar artery running here. And this is the ulnar artery, and when we trace it further, we can see this is the ulnar artery here. This is the ulnar artery. The ulnar artery is situated lateral to the ulnar nerve. This is the ulnar artery. And it also runs under cover of the flexor carpi ulnaris. So ulnar nerve, ulnar artery. And this also then comes to the palm and it forms the superficial palmar arch. The next structure which I would like to draw your attention to, apart from this superficial vein which is the cephalic vein is, once I retract the brachioradialis in the cubital fossa, we can see this nerve here. This is the radial nerve. And we can see the radial nerve comes to the cubital fossa just in front of the lateral epicondyle. And I can feel the lateral epicondyle with my thumb here. And here, it divides into a superficial and a deep branch. And we can see the superficial branch here. This is the deep branch, this one. The deep branch supplies the extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis, and it then pierces through the supinator muscle. And it becomes the posterior interosseous nerve, which supplies all the muscles on the extensor aspect. Here we can see only the superficial branch. And we can see the superficial branch also runs under cover of the brachioradialis. And here, this is the superficial branch. And the superficial branch does not supply anything. It's a cutaneous branch which runs all the way here. And this also crosses the anatomical snuff box. And it supplies the skin on the dorsum of the hand. So these are all the structures that we can see on the flexor aspect of the hand. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out. My MD1 students have been assisting me. Have a nice day.